Toyota Time with Timmy the Tool Man and Sean. Today, we have returning special guest Vincent, and we are filming at Vincent's shop in San Jose. And what we're gonna show you how to do today is do a coolant renewal on your Lexus LX470 or your Toyota 100 Series Land Cruiser. I believe in renewing the coolant about every 30,000 miles. Others think you can go as long as 50,000, 60,000, but I normally stick to a 30,000 mile coolant renewal for the vehicles that I own. For this job, all you're gonna need is some Toyota Red Concentrate and some distilled water. I recommend buying two gallons of the concentrate and two gallons of distilled water because you will use a little bit more than two gallons. So you're gonna have some leftover concentrate and leftover distilled water after this job, but it's not a big deal because it doesn't expire. You can use that coolant and distilled water for your next coolant flush on whatever Toyota or Lexus you're working on. For this job, we are gonna remove the front tires so we can have easier access through the wheel wells to get to the block drains on either side of the block. So right now we have the front end jacked up, supported on six ton jack stands, and we're gonna get the wheels on. Before we get started on the job, I want to let you know that this coolant renewal process is gonna replace most of the coolant, but not all of it because there's still gonna be some old coolant inside the heater core and inside the heater metal lines and rubber lines. But don't let that concern you because the majority of the system will be exchanged. If your coolant is in really, really bad shape, it looks corroded and the color is not quite right, then in that circumstance, I recommend that you do a flush because you really want to get all of that old nasty coolant out of the system. And if you want to learn how to do a coolant flush, you can click on the link above and you can see how we do that with several rounds of distilled water. And what you learn from this video of how to drain the radiator and how to drain the engine block is going to really help expedite the process of doing the coolant flush. So definitely watch this video before you start to do your coolant flush if you need to do that. All right, let's get back to the video. So you're gonna wanna get your front skid plate out of the way. Vincent already has his off, so we can't show that. And then you wanna open the petcock valve on the radiator, which is on the passenger side, and we'll show you where that's at. The petcock valve is right here. I'm gonna twist it lefty loosey and open it up. Vincent has this Nipix channel lock wrench. It's smooth jaws. So I'm gonna break this free. The last guy who worked on this really cranked this tight. Open it up and let it drain. We're gonna take the radiator cap off and that will expedite the draining because it will vent air. So you're gonna wanna let it drain until the radiator is completely empty. You're gonna notice that we're only gonna drain out about a couple quarts and that's because we're doing this coolant drain to be able to replace some heater hoses at the back of the engine. So don't let that throw you when you see that we only have a little bit drained out into the 18 quart catch container. And now what I'm gonna show you is where the block drains are on each side of the engine. We'll start with the driver's side. Vincent has the camera pointed at the block drain right now, and it's behind a heat shield that's right behind the engine mount bracket. And we have this hose connected to it because there's a nipple that you could slide the hose over to be able to drain it out into your catch container. I'll slide it off to show you what that looks like. So you can see that nipple that we have the hose slid over. So this is the heat shield that I was talking about, and this is the engine mount bracket. So this gives you another vantage point of where that block drain is on the driver's side. The size of the block drain bolt is a 10 millimeter, and this is what I'm using to get in there. I'm using a couple wobble extensions connected together, and then I have this 10 millimeter universal. This is a universal joint and socket in one. So I'm gonna crack that loose and we're gonna drain some of the coolant out on the driver's side of the block. 
and you could see the coolant draining out. It went down to a dribble and I tightened up the block drain with the same tool combo. I just went by feel. I'm sure there's a torque spec for that, but all you gotta do is snug it up nice and tight and call it a day. If I can find a torque spec for it, I'll put it in the video description. But at some point, it will be advantageous to you if you can learn how to tighten fasteners without breaking them or them stripping or they fall off. So use your torque elbow or that German spec of good and tight and a lot of times you won't even have to rely on a torque wrench. So now we're gonna jump over to the passenger side and I'll show you where that block drains at. We're looking in from the passenger wheel well and you can easily see the block drain. You've got the bolt here and you've got the drain pipe right there. So I'm gonna get that same hose slid over there and then I'm gonna get onto that with my 10 millimeter universal socket and break it free. Okay, I'm on it with my ratchet and extension and socket combo and I'm gonna break it free. And we've got some coolant coming out on this side. Maybe not as much as gonna come out on this side because I already thoroughly drained the passenger side of the block, but we're gonna let this drain for a while too. So a fair amount is coming out of this passenger side of the block. My thinking was incorrect that because I first drained the driver's side, not much would come out of the passenger side, but quite a bit is coming out. So definitely drain both of the block drains. All right, it's finished draining on the passenger side and I'm gonna lock off the block drain. Okay, and that's good and tight. We've got the tires on and now we're gonna start filling the system with coolant again. I have my Lyle spill-free funnel with a bunch of different fittings and caps that you can use to refill your system. So I already figured out the adapter and the cap that are gonna work. So you put the adapter in first with the gasket side down and then you get the cap on and cinch it down. And you should have a tight fit. And then you put the spill-free funnel in. Now we're gonna refill the system with the 50-50 mix of the Toyota Red Concentrate with distilled water. So before you start pouring coolant back in, make sure that you close the pet cock valve at the bottom of the radiator and make sure you tighten both block drains. Now, you're gonna watch me pour coolant out of this drain container and you're gonna be wondering, why are you reusing coolant? Because this is a coolant replacement video. Well, the reason is, is because this video came about because we were replacing all the heater hoses at the back of the engine and we thought the video for replacing the coolant hoses would double as a coolant renewal video and because Vincent's coolant is pretty much brand new, he recently renewed it, there's no need for us to put new coolant in. We could reuse the old stuff. This system holds over two gallons, so what I would recommend for you is you start off by pouring a whole gallon of the concentrate in, follow that up with a whole gallon of distilled water, and then after that, you should make a 50-50 mix into a gallon jug that I'll show you that's really good for that. And then you'll top off the rest of the system using that method of pre-mixing it. So I'm just gonna pour all this coolant back into the system. And you get the idea. I'm just gonna sit here and pour it all in. All right, we have the radiator topped off as much as it will take. I know it's gonna take more, so I'm gonna pre-mix some in this one gallon food grade container. And I'm gonna start off with just making one quart. I'll make more if I need to, because I don't wanna make too much and then not be able to use it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill it with a half a quart of distilled water to right here, and then I'm gonna fill it up the rest of the way to the quart line with the concentrate. It's best to do this on a level table. With these things, you just pierce this aluminum top here. Okay, we have a quart of 50-50 mix, and now we're gonna start the engine. And you'll start to 
see bubbles coming up, and that's air working its way out of the system. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more to the spill-free funnel. I'm gonna have Vincent turn the heater to full hot, and that's gonna open up the heater control valve to get the coolant cycling through the heater core and also to the rear heater. So while the engine's running, you can help facilitate the engine getting warmer faster by increasing the throttle. You can do it right here at the throttle body. So right here, I could twist this back towards the firewall. And then you could see bubbles coming up. Once you see that your temperature gauge is at normal operating temperature, whether you're just using the OEM analog gauge on the dash cluster or you have some type of scan gauge or ultra gauge that's telling you the exact temperature your engine's at. And that means that the thermostat has opened and the coolant is circulating through the engine to the radiator throughout that heater system. You can get out a little bit more air by flipping the throttle. So you can rev it and you'll most likely see more air coming up into your spill-free funnel. But once you get tired of doing that a bunch of times, at some point you just have to call it good because you really don't see much more air working its way out. So we are at that point, we're gonna shut off the engine and then we're gonna transfer what's left in the funnel to the reservoir. So the way this spill-free funnel can be spill-free is when you're ready to take it off, you wanna squeeze the upper radiator hose and push some of the coolant from the radiator up into the spill-free funnel. So you're gonna see some coolant glugging up when I squeeze it. Now I'm gonna hold the radiator hose collapsed and then put the plunger in and release the radiator hose. Now that should allow me to pull this up and not spill any coolant, just like that. And then I'm gonna transfer this over to the reservoir. And I'm gonna top it off to the top line, the full line or the hot line. I went a little bit above the top line and that's perfectly fine because what I found anytime I do a coolant renewal for whatever reason as preventative maintenance or I needed to drain the system to replace hoses, air is gonna continue to work its way out after you drive it for a few days. So don't be surprised after you drive it for a couple days and you recheck the level in the reservoir, you're gonna see that it's dropped a little bit and that's normal because you're not getting all the air out of the system by using the spill-free funnel and burping the system. There's always gonna be some leftover air in there and once that works its way out, the level will drop. And then you just simply top it off with a little more 50-50 uh, mix. And after you've done that once, maybe a couple times, the level should stabilize provided you don't have some type of leak somewhere or your engine is consuming it like you have a cracked head or a head gasket problem and then you should be good to go. All right, we are all done with this job of renewing the coolant on your Lexus LX470 or your Toyota 100 series Land Cruiser. It's pretty straightforward. Luckily, the access to get to the block drains isn't too hard. So if you use the same type of tools that I use, you should be able to get to those block drains no problem. You get yourself a little bit of hose at a auto parts store or at a hardware store. And then this way you could direct the coolant into your catch container really easily and not create a big mess underneath the vehicle. And then you top off the system using your Lyle spill-free funnel with your 50-50 mix of Toyota Red Concentrate and distilled water. And you top off the reservoir. And then just know, like I said, you should see the level drop a little bit over the next couple days you drive it. And then you just simply top it off with a little bit more of the 50-50 mix and you should be good to go for another 30,000 miles or however long of an interval you wanna do the next coolant renewal on your rig. With all that said, we thank you for watching Toyota Time with Timmy the Toolman and Sean. We will of course be back with more videos. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. 
click on that subscribe button. Also click on that notification bell if you'd like to be notified when we put up new content on our channel, which we are always, always, always putting up very helpful and sick mods kind of content. So don't miss out. Peace out. Happy ranching. Bye-bye.